Rolling? Yep, rolling. Okay. Three. Too fat. Okay, three, two, one. Here we are, fishing fans. Hang on, lost it. Keep going. Three, two, one. Here we are, fishing fans. Paul Bassman presenting. So we're down the river today, and today's episode is that we're in the mullet series again, and today's going to be all about the ground bait. But I'm not sure whether I'm going to call this video ground baiting tips or the mackerel pasty. Mackerel pasty, right, and we'll get to the pasty bit in a minute. Basically, I've had a bit of a brainwave. I, I do have these sort of weird and wonderful thoughts. And, you know, throughout my fishing career, I've, I've found a lot of stuff out just through trial and error. I mean, some of it's absolute rubbish and it's just like, oh yeah, well that didn't work, you know, blah, blah, blah. But some of it I've actually adopted and I actually do quite well out of these little bits and bobs. So yeah, we've got, we've got the honky tonk geese in the background. So that's, that's very nice. So yeah, so I'm out with Dan today. Say hi, Dan. Hi, peeps. Good man. So come in a minute, mate. Right, so ground bait. So I've done this before on my little tip series, but um, you know, I didn't really go into it much. So all I've got here is obviously a bucket and there's three, three loaves of bread in there. And if you can get in there, can you see that? Right, so that's mackerel fillet, okay? Now mullet absolutely love mackerel, you know, the, the flavor, the scent, and they actually eat mackerel. They actually take little strips of mackerel on small hooks. You can catch them, you know, up the Tamar, up by um, Mutton Cove, Mount Wise. They, they love a bit of mackerel up there. If you just dangle that down light in a bit, in, in the bread as well. So yeah, so, so that's the, the ground bait, or it's going to be. So I'm, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down to the river. I'm just gonna, fill up the bucket with some water there and then uh, we're going to mix this all up and throw it in and hopefully we're going to catch some nice mullet. So here we are, I've been down to the stream, got some water, you can just about make out the water in there, look. Right, so all I need to do now is I'm just going to mix this up and turn it into a nice place. Well, well actually I'm not going to mix this up, you are. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, bud. Look, I, see, I've done this so many times, but you need to learn. Yeah. So, you know, it's not that I don't want to get my hands dirty, but <laughs> give me that. So here we are. So Dan's done a really good job of mixing that up and he's managed to wash his hands and start filming. <laughs> well done, mate. Cheers. <laughs> Sorry I made you do that. But, That's all right. You know, it's just, it's an apprentice thing. You have to sort of start at the bottom, you know what I mean? Anyway, so there's a mixed look. We've actually stiffened it up because it was a little bit loose. It's just, just about movable, look. So that's all got the nice mackerels and everything in it and that's really going to make a difference to our swim. The tide's dropping off the spring now, so a bit more info for you. You know, after the equinox of the tide, the mullet seems to drop off, drop off, drop off. They almost disappear. And it's purely because of that moon phase, of course, but it doesn't mean to say that you still can't catch them. And I made a really good discovery a few, few weeks ago on a, on a neat tide. And it's just changed my outlook on mullet fishing, if you like. It's, it's, it's really exciting stuff, and hopefully I'll get to show you in the, the coming weeks, you know? So yeah, so back to, back to today's mission. So, mackerel pasty. What are you on about, mackerel pasty? So, okay, I'd had a couple of beers last night, and uh, got home, what have you. Had a bit of a brainwave, and yeah, I've used this inline, uh, you know, I've done a video on this inline wishbone rig before. Uh, Mr. Larkin has been, and I have been using this rig for over a year. It's, it's our go-to sight fishing rig. So when we can actually, when we're sneaky peeking in the jungle and stuff, and we can actually, we're looking down at mullet and we can actually drop this in, you know, and it, and it, and it pops up two baits. It gives you an extra chance. It means that when they mug one off, there's another offer in there as well. So you've, you're, always, you're in the game a bit longer. So that's really important when you're mullet fishing, you know, cause very easy, you just get mugged off and, and that's it. You don't get any more bites. So if you just come in a little bit, Dan. So instead of the usual, you know, the, the usual sort of carp hook or mixer hook, if you like, the size eight. I mean, this is actually quite big, right? And I say it is an experiment. This is an Isema size one. So it's the sort of smallest one they do. It's absolutely needle sharp, right? And obviously there's two of them, okay? So there's, there's the rig and and there's the inline weight, yeah? So it's really nice and neat. There's nothing dragging on the bottom. And that, that's my idea, the little weight there. I was just, because obviously I use this when I'm on the coast rassing. So the idea of this is mackerel pasty. So I'm there thinking last night, I'm thinking, well, yeah, we're going to do this ground bait and it's going to be awesome on camera and everything. But 
I want to use a little bit on my hook as well, the mackerel, just to see, you know, if we can get some on mackerel. So, and then I thought, well, how's that going to work? You know, you know, you've got real tiny hooks or treble hooks or double hooks or whatever. And I thought, well, it's not that much bigger than a size eight carp hook, that, right? And I'm quite confident this, this is going to work. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And I've, this is the first time I've tried it. So an experiment can't be done in one go. I'll have to sort of trial this, but so basically I'm going to put a strip of mackerel and here's, here's our lovely mackerel. Look, this is from my shop, from my freezer. You can see how fresh it is. It's uh, knockout baits. It's from uh, Southwest Sea Baits. So I get quite a lot of my bait there from him now because it's, it's really good quality. You know, he's got all the gear up there, backpack and blast freezers. It makes all the difference. So I'm just going to literally scissor off a couple of little strips of a fillet and I'm going to obviously hook that on my little hooks there on both the hooks and then I'm going to get my bread as usual. Now you know where this is going don't you? And I'm going to make a mackerel pasty. <laughs> so I'm going to I'm going to take off a bit of bread and I'm going to put that over the mackerel right. So so when they've gone through the bread and at the usual point where they've just had enough, they see the hook and they don't take it anymore. My, my, my thought is perhaps that once they get through the bread and you know effectively get to the point where they see the hook, well, if there's a nice little chunk of mackerel on it, well, maybe they'll carry on, you know? So this is, this is the thinking, this is how I think, you know, I, I, I do think outside the box. I don't make all the right decisions and that's all part of the fun. I think if you, if you don't think about anything, if you're not a thinking angler, you're just going through the motions every week, you know, well, let's go fishing, let's take this, let's take that. And, you know, just just try some new things. It doesn't, you know, you don't even have to tell anybody. If you feel silly, if it doesn't work, so what? You know, fishing's all about trial and error, right? And I've had plenty of trial and I've had plenty of error, but I've also had some good success. So, so let's just see if this works. If it does, it could be a game changer. Uh, if it doesn't, so what? So there you go, that's the little wishbone rig there, look, in line. And and I think we're gonna have to call this this uh, video mackerel pasty, don't you, Dan? I agree. <laughs> right, so there you go, let's let's go. So that's, there's, there's the mix, look, that Dan's kindly mixed up. And the tide's just about to turn here. So all I'm gonna do is, I mean, look at that. That's nice, isn't it? <laughs> You can just about smell this fish in it. So there you go, look. Firing it out there. Might actually make it a little bit thicker than this. And that is going to put down a massive scent trail, a big cloud. You know, any mullet's just going to go, woohoo, party time! Raining bread. Right, last one. So you can see the state of it. You know, it's uh, it's yeah, it's a bit like wallpaper paste. But uh, there we go. So right, so that's that's a lot. That's a lot of smell down there, man. So I'm just going to wash my hands now, and we'll we'll uh, we'll get ready, and we'll have a little fish, and we'll get the mackerel pasties on the go, and see if the fish are hungry, eh? <laughs> So here we are, look, we've, uh, we've made up our mix, we've thrown it in the drink, if you like. So there's my wriggler, and I've, I've made one up already. So obviously it's, there's, there's the one mackerel pasty there, look. And there's my, there's, I've, sort of, I've sort of put the mackerel on there at the back through twice. So I'm just gonna show you now the second pasty. So there's the mackerel, and I'm just gonna jam it inside the bread, <laughs> <laughs> like a pasty. Fold it over, fold it over, over, and there you go. Now, we're not gonna put this in the oven for 20 minutes at 180 degrees Celsius, no. We're gonna now launch this into the river in a confident fashion. And I'm, I'm quietly confident that those little, those little balls of joy there are gonna work, all right? So let's get these pasties out there, man. So the mackerel pasties have been very well received. Just literally cast in and bang, 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 bang. 
So yeah, they were still biting, even though the bread's all, all but gone, they were still biting on the mackerel. So we carry on.